all right what's up youtube so we're finally back here with our video for the part two on the fuel return system in this video i'm going to be showing you guys all the fittings that i'm using the ptfe holes that i brought the tools that i'll be using you know all that good stuff right off the back i'm going to go ahead and start off with the fittings we're using so the fittings that we are using are ptfe fittings the reason why we are using ptfe fittings is because we will be using our ptfe line if you guys don't know you can't use regular holes with ptfe fittings you have to use ptfe hoses with ptfe fittings specifically okay so make sure you double check before you go out and buy these parts. The reason why we're using PTFE is because we are going to be running M5, Q16, and E85. So normal rubber hoses will over time break down with those types of fuels. But for the Teflon line in here is protective against that. So that's why I recommend you guys going with PTFE over just regular rubber hoses. So do your research on that. If you're gonna use pump gas and you can probably use uh, regular rubber holes, but I would still advise using PTFE. PTFE also has a better pressure rating. So that's another good reason why you should use it. So we'll be using PTFE fittings. If you guys will know the difference, this is what PTFE looks like. And this is what a regular fitting looks like. You see it's different on the top part right here compared to this one. So for this project, you're gonna need various PTFE fittings. I'm gonna go ahead and go through the video with you guys on what I'm using, what type of degree fittings I'm using, straight fittings, you know, all that good stuff. I'll be using, of course, a 180, a few 90 degrees, a few 45 degrees, and you're definitely gonna need a fuel filter because we did get rid of our OEM fuel filter. So we had to use an external fuel filter and make sure it is serviceable. This is an Evil Energy fuel filter. It's got a 30 micron filter in there, but I am gonna be switching it out for a 10 micron filter after 500 miles. 10 micron being the highest filtration system and 30 mic microns being somewhere in the middle of that. Basically you wanna make sure you just stay away from 100 micron because this is a after fuel pump filter. So you want a lower rating micron filter after the fuel pump. And before the fuel pump, you want a higher micron rating. Along with the stuff that I have right here, I went ahead and started doing some installs on the other parts. And the other part that I need to show you guys, if we come over here, we see that we have this little guy right here and we have this fitting right here. And then we also have our fuel pressure regulator. So we need a fuel pressure regulator because again, we did delete our fuel pressure regulator, our OEM one. So we have to use the aftermarket one and make sure whenever you get a fuel pressure regulator, you use a gauge for it, okay? It's very important to get a gauge for it because without this gauge, you're really not gonna be able to figure out how to do, regulate your fuel pressure. All right guys, so I really recommend you guys grabbing a set of tools that are gonna go for good with the job, like these right here. These are AN wrenches. 100% recommended because these will prevent you guys from scratching up your fittings like this right here. It's a little scratched up. I'm not sure if you guys will care about it, but to me, it bugs me a little bit. So I went ahead and brought these so it wouldn't hurt it or damage it as bad. To hold it in place, I'm also gonna be using another wrench, but I would highly advise you guys actually buying a vise and the other correct tool for it. And I'll post a picture of it right now. Basically what that tool does is it holds it in place while you turn the fitting on. I'll show you guys that in a second as well. WD-40 will come in handy. A cutting wheel will be very, very handy. Masking tape, definitely need. Some gasket maker for some of the fittings that you guys are gonna be using. A drill is gonna be needed to drill out some holes because you're gonna need to use some screws to hold some things down. And that's pretty much it, what you're gonna be using tool-wise. So as you guys can see right here, the first thing I went ahead and did is found a spot to mount my fuel pressure regulator. And this bracket actually comes with the fuel pressure regulator. I'll link the fuel pressure regulator down in the description below on where I brought it from. So it comes with this metal plate and all I did was instead of facing it up, I just flipped it and faced it down, drilled a hole through it and used a 10 millimeter to hold it down and it's in place. You're gonna have vacuum reference right here cause this is controlled by vacuum reference. So this gets teed into right here, which goes to the intake manifold. This will be teed into that. And then it's also teed into my boost sensor. So we have our fuel pressure regulator set up. Now we're gonna go ahead and start working back here. So the first thing you're gonna want to do is make sure this hose is plugged in. This is for your siphoning tube. Make sure that's plugged in because we're gonna need to use this to make sure everything else is gonna clear. What we're gonna be focusing on right now is our fuel feed line first. So the first thing I did 
was I went ahead and brought this 516 2-6 AN fitting right here. It's called a quick disconnect fuel fitting. And what it does is it makes your bar fitting, your OEM bar fitting into a 6 AN fitting or any type of AN fitting that you would like it to be. And then after installing this and making sure it was tight on there, not coming off, I went ahead and figured out what fitting I was gonna use in this area. So I didn't use a straight fitting because it was gonna hit this right here. So instead I went ahead and got a 45 degree fitting and I went ahead and put that on and it cleared. After figuring out this fitting cleared, I went ahead and ran the rest of the PTFE hose through the bottom of the chassis all the way to the front of the engine. So we are under the car now and we are, this is our fuel line right here and we're pretty much tracing it all the way to the front. So what I'm gonna recommend you guys doing is using this stock line right here, I would recommend you guys zip tying your fuel feed and fuel return line to this. And whenever you're sending it through here, figure out where you wanna put your fuel filter at. For me, I'm gonna put my fuel filter right here, just before the tunnel right here. So. I'll show you guys what it looks like once I'm done. So this is where you're gonna need your drill to come in and then your self-tapping screws. And then I'm gonna show you guys once it's done and mounted up right here, how it looks like. As you can see, this is mounted to this. A quick note though, whenever you're doing this, make sure you don't drill too deep. If you drill too deep, you'll hit the carpet. So make sure you don't drill into the carpet. So we got our fuel filter. Make sure you put this in the correct direction. So the arrow indicates the flow of the fuel. So the fuel is gonna be coming from this side and exiting this side. So make sure you put this up properly, okay? Fuel filter is now in place. Now we can start measuring on where we're gonna be putting the rest of our lines at. So basically what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna bring this hose, burn it against here with some zip ties and figure out where it meets this guy. And then we're gonna go ahead and mark it with our yellow tape, cut it in the garage, put our fittings together, and then we're gonna put it together. As you guys can see right here, I have a zip tie over there, at the very beginning, a zip tie right here, and I have another zip tie right here. Now that I know where I need to cut it at, I'm gonna go ahead and get my yellow tape, give it an extra inch or two, that way I have some wiggle room for play and I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. And then once I'm done cutting it, I'll go ahead and assemble this holes with my PTFE fittings. All right, so I have my fuel line right here and I'm gonna go ahead now and cut it right here. And then I'm gonna show you guys how to assemble a PTFE fitting using braided hoses. My method of cutting it is actually using a cutting wheel Dremel. It cuts really quick with it as well as it makes it a clean cut. The only thing I recommend you guys doing is making sure you get some compressed air and blow out it once you're done with it. That way you can get all the debris out of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys right now. All right, so this is what I'm left with. I'm gonna use this later, so I'm gonna put this to the side for now. And when I was talking about blowing through it, all you gotta do is literally go through this end and blow out, and check this out. As you can see, a lot of debris comes out of it. You can also use an air gun, whichever one, I'll probably use an air gun in a bit. And this is what you're left with now to play with. So as you can see right here, this is your PTFE tubing inside, and it's protected with the braided nylon on the outside. And the reason why you wanna use tape is to prevent this braided part out here from flaring up. So it's very important to use tape to prevent that flaring from happening. So the first part of assembling PTSE hose is we're gonna go ahead and disassemble our fitting real quick. And with our fitting, we're gonna get three things. This is our fitting itself. This is our flare nut right here. And then this is the part that goes over the PTFE line. First thing we're going to do is grab this piece that goes over and we're going to flip it and we're going to slide it on our hose just like this. Just like that. So this part is now ready. Now what we have to do is get a flathead and we're going to have to flare out our braid right here, okay? Just a little bit, not too much. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. As you can see, we have our braiding on the outside right here, this nylon. And all we're going to do is get our flathead and all we're gonna do is push out. That's all we're doing. And we're gonna do that all around so we can get this flared out nice and good because we need it flared out to fit our olive over it, which is that silver part on the fitting. That olive is very important because it needs to sit properly. If it doesn't seat properly, then we won't have a tight seal. So it's very important to make sure it sits properly. 
And in order for that to happen, we need this to be flared out just a little bit. So as you can see, I'm just going on the outside, getting the head, pushing it out. Nothing too hard. Very easy actually. And now it's like this. So now we can get our olive over here. As you can see, there's like some indentions in there and that's pretty much what our hose is gonna seat up against. You wanna make sure that the hose is seated all the way up to the top part, this top ring right here. So this part is gonna go over the hose like this and you can see where there's like a little stop in there for it. There's a wall right there in the corner of it and it needs to be seated flush with that, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys right now what it looks like after putting it on here. All right, so you can see right here that our PTFE hose is right there and it's seated up against all the way on that olive. And you want that to be the same on all the sides, okay? Make sure it's all lined up. I'm actually gonna give it a quick cleaning real quick because as you can see, there's still a little bit of debris in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean it real quick before I put everything else on. For our next part, this is where the WD-40 comes in. We're gonna WD-40. And now we're gonna put this fitting on top of our olive fit it through here like this just like that nice and snug and now we're gonna get our WD-40 spray a little bit on the threadings and spray a little bit on here get it nice and lubricated that way it will be easier to turn once it's all tied together we're gonna push up now all we're doing rotating it on the fitting all it's, that's all it is. We're gonna feed it some more WD-40. And keep rotating. Once you have it threaded on just a little bit, you can go ahead and get your wrench and you can go ahead and start rotating it on. And then after that, this will be bottom out and I'll show you guys what it looks like. And that's how you have a perfectly good seal PTFE fitting. I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick and show you guys what it looks like when it's done. So once you get to about like right here where it's a little bit more closer and about to thread down all the way, this is where you're gonna need to get two wrenches and you're gonna need to hold one end like this, whatever one you feel comfortable with. And then while you're holding it with that one, you get to come on the top part and rotate it on still using this bottom nut right here. So in other words, it's gonna look like this and you're gonna be rotating it on. This is the part where I really recommend you guys using a vise or buying a vise because if you buy a vise and the correct AN fitting uh, clamp for this, it makes life 10 times easier. You wouldn't have to use this. You can just simply lock it in a vise, get this guy and just turn it over, that's it. And after that, it's just easier using a vise. What I'm doing right now is the hard way. But uh, I'll definitely be investing into a vice soon. So let me go ahead and finish this up real quick and I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done. And that's what it's gonna look like. See how it's pretty much bottom out right here. There's a slight gap, but that's fine. And then as you can see right here, it's a little damage on the fitting itself, just because I'm using this and I'm not using the correct tools. Other than that, that tool is really good. But yeah, that's how you pretty much assemble a PTFE line. And you're gonna repeat this process a few times. So I really recommend buying some extra holes uh, along the way because if you mess up it's fine don't worry about it everyone has their first time making mistakes and whatnot and doing AN lines is definitely not the easiest thing to do uh, for everyone but you know it's a learning process so definitely go out buy some more line just be prepared to buy more just in case but what I did is I brought a 10 foot with all my fittings and a 20 foot by itself and I got 30 feet all together, which is kind of excessive because in reality, all you need is about 22 feet, 23 feet and you can get all of this done. So that's how you pretty much put together PTFE fittings. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the car tomorrow because it is dark outside now and I'll go ahead and see you guys back here tomorrow to finish up the rest of our video.